Mangai o te whare tenakwe, e mana e na reo, e na waka, e rararoro mai nei, tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm pleased to take a call on the Kaikoura Te Tai o Marakura Marine Management Bill. The Green Party supports the creation of more marine protected areas around New Zealand and the protections contained in this bill, and that's why we are supporting it, because it does advance marine conservation. And in New Zealand, we're about a century behind protection at sea as we are on land. And New Zealanders generally think that about a third of uh, our marine area is protected, according to a survey that WWF did in 2011. But in fact, less than half a percent of our waters are protected as marine reserves. So this bill is a small step towards improving that statistic, but, uh, but as my colleague Gareth Hughes noted, we do have some uh, concerns with it and believe that it doesn't um, go far enough. Um, and before I move on to that, I would just like to, as others have done, acknowledge the huge amount of work that Te Korowai, uh, did in discussing, identifying areas for protection and coming up with the package that has been um, put forward in this bill and certainly enjoyed um, the visit that the Select Committee did to the Kaikoura area and hearing the strong submissions from members of Te Korowai and other members of the community about the bill because when um, law puts in place the views of a community, it is generally good law. But this bill could have been improved, Mr Speaker, if the marine, protection, marine protected areas guidelines that were developed by the Ministry of Primary Industries and the Department of Conservation had actually been applied to the process of identifying areas for protection as marine reserve and dealing with their boundaries. And it's in that area um, that we have some significant concerns. Because as the um, Minister noted, the Kaikoura Canyon is nationally and internationally recognised as a hotspot of biodiversity. So when you apply the marine protected area guidelines, it is about ensuring that marine reserves protect a representative range of the biodiversity that is present. And the guidelines also talk about avoiding edge effects. And here we have a very odd shaped marine reserve with two lobes and about 12 different sides um, with an irregular, very irregular shape, which submitters have said will cause difficulties with enforcement and also um, compound the problem of edge effects. Because it's widely known with a lot of marine reserves here and overseas that fishers will often sit on the um, outer boundary of the reserve because the reserve assists in um, increasing marine life, obviously. And that fishing will have an impact on species within the reserve. So where you have an odd shaped reserve that um, in parts is less than a kilometre wide, those edge effects will be intensified because of the very um, odd boundaries. And that will limit the effectiveness of the reserve. So those concerns were set out in strong submissions by the Royal Forest and Bird Protection Society National Office and the Marine Sciences Society. And like Moana Mackey from Labour, I strongly reject the um, claim by Maggie Barry that those submissions, or the one by Forest and Bird, was doctrinaire, because it was based on very sound science about the um, impact of edge effects, about international best practice uh, in terms of marine reserve design, and it was very disappointing that the statutory agencies involved in the Te Korowai forum process and that collaborative process did not help the forum to implement um, best practice guidelines or the uh, marine protected areas uh, policy. So we uh, applaud the change that the minister proposes to bring with a supplementary order paper to um, reduce the review period from 25 years to uh, 10 years. And we hope that that review will address these issues of the extremely complex 12-sided boundary um, and the fact that the reserve does not protect all the areas that it uh, should do. Because the experience has been around New Zealand that where you've had significant opposition to the establishment of marine reserves, that has generally changed after they've been um, established and you've had strong community support. In the uh, Lee Marine Reserve from Cape Rodney to Okari Point, there was a lot of opposition to that. 
And yet when the Department of Conservation did a, and others did a study in 2008, they identified that over 375,000 people visited that marine reserve annually and contributed $18.6 million a year to the local economy. So the fact that this Hikarangi Marine Reserve protects less than two kilometres of the coast, much less than any other marine reserve in New Zealand in terms of the length of coast protected, even the um, tiny postage stamp Pohatu or Flea Bay Reserve in Canterbury, which is only 215 um, hectares in size, protects nearly six kilometres of coastline. Here, with the Hikarangi Reserve, it's only going to protect less than two kilometres. Now, Mr Speaker, that is overlooking a major opportunity for recreational tourism because the coast at Kaikoura is very um, accessible given the uh, State Highway runs along it. And as we've seen with the Tonga Marine Reserve in uh, near uh, in Abel Tasman National Park, that resulted in a lot more visitors to Abel Tasman, more accommodation providers um, establishing, more water taxi operators, more kayak companies. So a major boost in economic activity associated with marine protection, and the same at Lee. And I think if the reserve had been bigger along the coast so that it was easily um, accessible to people wanting to go diving and snorkeling and to see marine life where it's unfished, that would have um, increased the significant benefits that Kaikoura already has from um, nature-based uh, tourism around the uh, whale uh, watching operation. So bringing that review period down to 10 years is certainly um, a good idea because we hope that the community will recognise that there are substantial economic as well as ecological benefits from uh, increasing the uh, marine reserve. And we certainly um, support the collaborative process that has operated here, but we think that it definitely needs to occur within the framework of national policy, the Marine Protected Areas Policy, where you have scientists on the forum, because there weren't any scientists on Te Korowai, and we note um, in the regulatory impact statement for the bill that the Te Korowai identified the marine reserve as an area which wouldn't have a major impact on um, fishing activity. So it's been that focus on ensuring that the fishers aren't too badly affected by the marine reserve and the lack of a strong science input that I think has led to the very odd boundaries and the um, strange two-lobe um, shape of the reserve and the fact that it doesn't protect a lot of the canyon walls um, above 800 metres uh, depth and that it's excluded areas like some critical seamounts which we know are a hotspot uh, for biodiversity. So Mr Speaker, the opportunity for the review is where we hope some of the shortcomings in the marine reserve will be addressed. But it is a bill that we support because it does take marine conservation <coughs> forward. Thank you. Members, this debate is concluded. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Kaikoura te tai o Marukuru, Marukura Marine Management Bill, second reading. This bill is set down for committee stage next sitting day. Members, the House stands adjourned until 2pm today. <laughs>